For more on this, we're joined now by retired Army Major General William Einyart. Uh, Major General, exactly how serious is this threat from Putin? And uh, given there's widespread documentation that both Russia and Ukraine have already used cluster bombs in this conflict. Oh, good evening, Nick. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, Putin has so far been talking about using cluster bombs. Um, the uh, In order to use cluster bombs, he'd have to drop those from airplanes. I think that would put the uh, Russian warplanes at serious risk uh, due to the anti-air weapons uh, that the Ukrainians already possess and the uh, fact that uh, we're apparently going to provide them with F-16 fighter planes. So the Russians would pay a heavy price to launch those weapons. Now, they have uh, reportedly already been using uh, cluster munitions, uh, as have the uh, Ukrainians uh, reportedly. Uh, I, I think that uh, Putin is uh, quite uh, likely to continue uh, the very little regard for the, the law of war uh, in attacking schools and hospitals and protected targets, whether that's in Ukraine or in Chechnya or in Syria. So it's unlikely that a treaty that he's not a signatory to uh, would even begin to slow him down. And it's worth noting, too, that neither the U.S. nor Ukraine is a, is a, a signer to this treaty. Did the Biden administration make the right call by sending these type of uh, munitions to Ukraine? Well, uh, I, I think so. Uh, you know, Ukraine has promised that they will not use them on Russian territory, that they'll only use them on Ukrainian land that's been occupied by the Russians. Uh, so since uh, Ukraine will be using it, using them on its own land, they have every incentive to decontaminate once the war is over. Uh, and you need to remember, too, that Russia has already extensively mined Ukrainian territory as part of their strategy to prevent Ukraine from regaining that occupied land. So extensive decontamination uh, will already be required. General Enyard, I want to shift the focus to North Korea, which uh, has test fired its first intercontinental uh, ballistic missile in three months this week. Now, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said today the administration is ready to talk. Will North Korea be willing to get to the table with the U.S.? Oh. Uh, we have you know, indicated to North Korea that we're prepared to sit down and talk without preconditions about their nuclear program. And we've also made clear to China uh, that it is the United States who is ready for diplomacy and North Korea who is not. Of course, uh, General Nyark, that was uh, Jake Sullivan. We just heard that sound from uh, he saying that he wants uh, North Korea at the table. Do you think that's going to happen? Well, certainly North Korea has not shown any inclination to, to talk. I, you know, I think the only way that, that uh, North Korea would begin to talk would be if China were really to jerk hard on North Korea's chain uh, and tell them to sit down and talk. And until that happens, it's, it's uh, not likely to, to happen. Uh, the, uh, the, the North Koreans, uh, certainly under their current leadership, have, have shown a very aggressive posture and are, and are not likely to uh, back down from that posture, in my opinion. Well, General Enyar, back here at home, Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville is continuing his months-long blockage of military promotions and nominations. Now, this is over his concerns over the Pentagon's abortion policy. Lawmakers on both sides and even some military leaders say this is holding up uh, military appointments and impacting our readiness. Do you agree with that? And is that the case uh, that he should be making at this level? Well, that, I absolutely agree with this. And, you know, uh, that's been played, uh, that game has been played many times in the past, and I think it's the wrong game to play. Uh, and it's been played by both sides. Um, this, uh, he's currently holding up something on the order of 200 and a little over 250 promotions of general, general and, and flag officers, admirals. Uh, and that is simply uh, not acceptable. You know, we have uh, generals who are retiring, generals who are, are being transferred, and we need uh, leaders in these senior positions. Uh, and certainly with the uh, problems that we've seen uh, in the uh, uh, Indo-Pacific area with China, the problems that are ongoing in Ukraine, uh, we need to have our leaders in place in order to respond. Uh, he is doing us no favors at all to drag social issues into what should be a, 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 a essentially a rubber stamp process. These generals have, have uh, walked the walk and talked the talk, and they're prepared to be promoted and should be promoted. General Enyard, I'm going to say this as a veteran. I think that it's often those who have not served who don't understand the necessity of having leadership in place for the rank and file because it really is important for morale and everything that we do on the ground. Major General Enyard, thank you so much for joining us this evening. 
Good to be with you, Nick, and I couldn't agree more. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.